Okay, today we're going to be talking about parametric differentiation. So, sometimes we can have the variables x and y are given oops, as a function of a third variable say t. Um, so we'll, for example say we had x equals 1 plus 4 sine t and y equals 2 cosine t. The third value t is known as a parameter. And these two equations are known as parametric equations of the curve. To find the to find the curve given by the parametric equations. Um, we would we would work out values for x and y separately with the, the different values of t. So let's say for the example we've got, we're going to deal with um, these equations in the range of between 0 and 2 pi. So let's find some values of x and y. So when t is 0, x is going to be 1 and y is going to be 2. When t is a quarter pi, x is going to be 3.83 and y is going to be 1.41. When t is a half pi, it's going to be 5 and 0. When t is 3 quarters pi, x is going to be 3.83 and y is going to be minus 1.41. When t is pi, x is going to be 1 and y is going to be minus 2. Let's make this table a wee bit longer. When t is 5 over 4 pi, we're going to have minus 1.83 and minus 1.41. When it's 3 over 2 pi, minus 3 and 0. 7 fourths pi, minus 1.83 and 1.41. And then when it's 2 pi, you've got 1 and 2. So you're literally just plugging the values of t for x into your calculator, getting these, same with y, and you build this table. So then you would have some proper graph paper and you would plot your values for x and y. And if you were to do that, you would find you'd get an eclipse. An eclipse. Um, and that's how you would deal with these parametric equations. But what if we wanted to um, find the derivative with respect to x? So what we can do is we can use the chain rule Um, and differentiate each with respect to t and then we can find the derivative with respect to x. The best way to show this is with an example. So let's have a look at an example. So the 
parametric equations of a curve are x equals t squared and y equals 5 minus 2t. And we want to find the derivative. <coughs> I want to find the derivative dy by dx in terms of t. So first things first, we're going to differentiate each of our parametric equations. So, oops, dx by dt is going to be 2t and dy by dt is going to be minus 2. Now, applying the, the, the chain rule principle, we've got dy by dx would be dy by dt times dt by dx so then the t, dt's cancel out now we know what dy by dt is it's minus 2 and dt by dx well dx by dt is 2t so if we take the inverse of that dt by dx will be 1 over 2t and that Cancelling that out, we'll get minus 1 over t. Now, when t equals 2, oh, find the equation of the tangent. So, when t equals 2, dy by dx equals minus a half. And x equals 4, um, 2 squared equals 4. And y equals 5 minus 2 times 2, which is going to be 1. Now we know, so the tangent is when it just skims the, um, touches at that point on the curve. So we can now use our equation of our line. So using y minus y1 equals m x minus x1, we can get the equation of the line, the tangent line to the curve. So y minus 1 equals, it's going to be minus a half x minus 4 and if we rearrange all that we get y equals minus a half x plus 3 and obviously we can use the same principle if we say we wanted to find the line that is perpendicular to the curve so um, the parametric equations of the curve are x equals 1 plus 2 sine squared theta and y equals 4 tan theta and this is these are in the range of pi over 2, less than theta, less than 3 pi over 2. Um, firstly, we want to find the derivative in terms of the parameter theta. So the, this, these, these equations, the parameter is no longer t, we're using theta. So Let's use let's deal with the the x the equation for x first. Dx by d theta 
is going to be and here we would use the chain rule to work out this we would get four because we'd have two coming down here times in with this two to get four and then derivative of what would be in the bracket would be cosine theta and then we'd still have our sine theta um, and then y is four tan theta dy by d theta would be four sec squared theta which is the same as four over cosine squared theta so remember with these you might need to play with the different trigonomic identities um, so the derivative dy by dx is going to be dy by d theta times d theta over dx. <coughs> so our dy by d theta is 4 over cosine squared theta times, now this is, we're going to have to take the inverse of this again. So that will be 1 over 4 sine theta cosine theta and see now you can see why we changed from sec squared theta to cosine put into the um, form using cosine because we've got a cosine from our dy by d theta um, so this will be 4 over or well the 4's cancel it's got a 4 here and a 4 here so it's going to be 1 over um, sine theta cosine cubed theta. Now we want to actually I'll get a new sheet up. We're going to be using the same equation. So we want to find the coordinates of the point where the tangent is parallel to the y axis. So let's just I'll just write down what we already had because we've no longer got it on view. So we found the derivative was this one over sine theta cosine cubed theta. And we had x was 1 plus 2 sine squared theta. And we had y is 4 tan theta. Okay. So, the point the tangent is going to be parallel to the, I think there's x, there's y. And it's going to be parallel to the y-axis, so the tangent is parallel to the y-axis. The gradient must be equal to um, to zero. Um, so that means sine theta cosine cubed theta must equal zero and um, sine or it's going to be um, undefined there sine this happens when sine theta equals zero or cosine theta equals zero and this happens when theta equals zero or when cosine equals zero it's not going to be in the range because remember we had the range I'll write the range down so that's going to be um, out of range so it's going to be zero or 
Oh no, no, sorry. Sine theta equals zero when theta equals pi. So our value of x would be one and our value of y would be zero. Um, so that point is, so the point of the tangent is parallel to the y-axis is 1, 0. So we're down about here somewhere. Um, so I hope that helps.